Alright, so this is the, so the last video we talked about what a differential equation was and what it represents graphically. And today we're going to formalize the differential equation and then look at applications applying it. There are lots of applications out there. We kind of just scratch the surface on them, um, but we're going to look at applications of differential equations in this case. Alright, so to formalize it, formal definition of di uh, differential e equations is it only works for continuous functions, where I can find a derivative. The dx, which represents my change in x, all right, so it's called the differential and it represents a small change in x. dy, which is the differential for y, and it represents an approximate change in y. All right, so my change in y is approximated by the derivative of my function at x times my change in x. Right, and that's what we're going to use in our applications. We're going to use this to approximate the change in our function. All right, so the first application, total cost to operate a certain type of truck on a 500 mile trip traveling at an average speed of X miles per hour is estimated by that cost equation in dollars. Find the approximate, so it is the approximate change in cost when the average speed is increased from 55 to 58. So approximate change means I'm, I'm going to use a differential, all right, I'm going to use an approximate change. So what is the approximate change in cost? Well, it's the derivative at our x value times the change in x. All right, so our x value is our current level, which is 55 miles per hour. So that's the current what they're traveling at. The change that they're looking at is three miles an hour, right? Going from 55 to 58 is an increase, right? Going up by three miles per hour. All right, so these are the values we're gonna plug in to our differential. We're gonna find the derivative at 55 and multiply it by three. All right, so before I do that though, I need to find my derivative. All right, so the derivative, I'm gonna rewrite this because of that. So my cost equation is 125 plus X, and instead of 4,500 4, divided by X, I'm gonna write 4,500 X to the negative first. All right, so the 125 zeros out, derivative of X is one. This one's power, I'll pull my negative out, so I get negative 4,500 times x to the negative second, times my three, and my 55 is gonna go in there. So 55 raised to the negative second, and then times, don't forget the times three, it's really easy to forget that. All right, this comes out when you type it all in, negative 1.46. Again, it's talking dollars, so I'm writing to the penny. And so what that means, if they make this increase, so if they, the average trip, they're going 55 miles an hour, if they decide to, to go up to 80, or so 58 miles per hour, all right, it's gonna cost them a little bit less, all right? So the cost will decrease, because it's negative, by about, it is an approximation, $1.46. So it doesn't decrease by much, all right? So again, they have to decide if it's worthwhile to do that. All right, but it does, so that's what this is telling me. My approximate change in cost, the cost will change by, it'll go down by about $1.46. And if you found the actual value, it should be close to that. And the reason why we do this is, is you can look at more changes. If I wanted to do it exactly, I'd have to plug the 55 in, the 58 into this original cost function, and then subtract. Well, this allows me, suppose 55 is where I'm starting, and I just wanted to know what different changes were. All right, so suppose instead of going up to 58, I go up to 60. All right, so all I'm doing is changing this part. I'm leaving this the same, and I'm just going to change the 3 to 5. Or if I wanted to go to 59 or to 53, all right, all I have to do is change my, my delta x. All right, I can leave the derivative and the 55 the same. I can look at all the different changes, all the different things that I can do, um, and how it affects my cost. So this is the reason why marginal analysis is often used. All right, the next example. All right, so the relation, so the first example was a cost example. This one's a sales example, so a marketing example. Suppose the relationship between the amount of money spent, so X is the amount of money of spent on advertising, all right, given by the sales equation, S of X, where X is measured in thousands of dollars. So thousands of dollars is, you know, what, so X is between zero and 200, that, that's a thousand dollars. Use differentials. All right, to estimate the total change in sales of advertising expenditures are increased from 100,000 to 105,000. 
Now our x value is 100 because it's in thousands of dollars, so that 100 means 100,000, and the 105 means 105,000. All right, so they're currently spending 100,000. That change, they're going to change it by 5,000, but again, in my equation, the change is 5. All right, so those are the values we're looking at. I want to know how they'll affect sales. If it's worthwhile to increase uh, the amount of advertising by $500. All right, well, I can approximate that by taking the derivative at my x value and multiplying it by my change in x. All right, so find the derivative first. All right, so this is a simple power function. So you get negative 006x to the second plus 1.2x plus 1 times my change in x. And again, those are the values we're going to plug in. We're going to plug 100 in for x, and we're going to plug 5 in. All right, so when I plug 100 into my derivative equation, it comes out 61. And then don't forget the change in x is 5. So 61 times 5 is going to come out 305. All right, so sales increased by about 305 units. All right, so they have to decide if selling 305 more units is worth spending $5,000 more in advertising. All right, and again, the word about because it's an approximation. And so they may change this. All right, suppose that, all right, they're, currently sell, they're currently spending that amount, so they wanted to see the change by 5,000. Well, they could easily decide, all right, what if we do 6,000? All right, so all they have to do is change this 5 to a 6 or 10,000. All right, they just have to change this 5 to a 10 or 2,000. Again, it allows them to see a whole bunch of different options fairly quickly. All right, this is why differentials are used. All right, my last example this is actually a book problem, so it's problem number 20, and for some reason it's small. Um, so I'll write my equation down since it's kind of small there. So the supply function, so this represents supply, is given by S of P, all right, where P is the price in dollars, S is the number of items produced, and that equation is 0 0.08 price cubed plus 2 times price squared plus 10 times price plus 11. All right, we want to use the differential equation to estimate the change in supply when we go from, all right, so our current level is $18, all right, $18, and we want to increase it to $18.20. So my change in x is 0.2, right? We're going up by 20 cents, all right? So those are the values I'm going to plug into my differential. All right, so change in supply is approximated by the derivative of supply times the change. And I said change in x, it's change in price. Sorry, those should be p's. My current price is $18. They're planning to increase the price to $18.20, and they want to know how that affects supply. All right, so this is the approximate change in supply. They do that. All right, so first the derivative, and then plug my values into it. All right, so the derivative of this function is the simple power rule. So uh, 0.08 times 3 is 0.24p squared plus 4p plus 10 times my change in price. All right, so again, I'm going to plug my 18 into the derivative, and I'm going to plug my 0.2 into the change in price. All right, so when I plug 18 in here, that equation comes out 159.76 times my 0.2 and so when I multiply that out it's 31.952 which I'm going to round to 32 because we're talking supply number of items so I'm going to round to the whole item so 31.59 I'd round up to 32. All right so if they change price from $18 to $18.20 all right the supply will increase by about 32 items. All right, so again, it should make sense. The bigger the price, the more they're willing to supply. So price is gonna go up, increase by about 32 units when they change their price from $18 to $18.20. All right, then they could see, again, this is where you have option. Their current level of, their current price is 18. So suppose they changed it by 40 cents. So again, they could plug 0.4 in here and see how that will affect supply. Or 50 cents, they could plug 0.5 in and see how that would affect it. So that's why 
differentials allow us to look at a lot of different examples if we want to. All right, you can plug in values fairly quickly, uh, then finding the exact change, plugging in two values and subtracting. And so that's why they're often used. All right, so that finishes up 2.6 notes. All right, and so we will stop there. We're going to then start into applications of exponentials and logarithms, and that's the next set of notes, which in chapter three.